Hello riding people, sorry about the uh, background noise, it's kind of noisier than a very noisy thing around here, lots of leaf blowers going, lots of gardening services on the go. Um, nice uh, late spring day and uh, today I'm going to ride some Indian motorcycles. Yes, my contact at Indian reached out to me and said uh, would I like to ride any of the 2021 or 2022 models and happens to have uh, the new 2022 uh, Indian Super Chief Limited and uh, that puts out 120 pound per feet of torque. I really like uh, the quick detached screen saddlebags and the kind of yesteryear looks with uh, the modern tech of the uh, TFT etc. Anyway I'd like to try that out and possibly the um, FTR refresh where they've now moved to 17 inch wheels and that bike should be a lot more dynamic. So uh, let's see how we get on. I'll do the little rundown on the on the Chief, right. Super Chief for you. So I think one of the nice visual things is you have two different screen options here. You wanna look at a big tachometer or you know more traditional gauge cluster. And then if you click here, all of these are actually an option for something you could look at as a screen. So we'll use a map as an example. You still have your miles per hour and your gear indicator, but now you've got a you know, map as your background. You know, there's, there's several different things from your phone to your music, you know, all maintaining that. So whatever you like is your screen you can look at. Um, so I'll leave it on gauges for now. And then in settings, you can easily go over to sport mode, which is quite fun. And then you have a touring mode. Um, and that's gonna mostly change kind of a throttle response. Sure. Um, but it's just, a, it's a very visually pleasing layout. Um, so I like that one, but whatever you like better. So I'm out on the 2022 Indian Super Chief Limited and uh, the difference between the Chief and the Super Chief is the engine basically on the Chief is the Thunderstroke 111 and uh, on the Super Chief it's the Big Ball 116 so that's the primary difference and the Limited gets the saddlebags and a quick detached screen which I'm getting quite a bit of, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say uh, turbulence, but a fair bit of wind noise off. I think it's probably a bit too too low or too high for my just over six footness. And uh, I think either a small sporty screen or the screen removed because it's quick detach or a taller screen about this kind of height about two inches taller kind of eye level would probably be good for me I quite like this color this maroon color it's very very dark almost a kind of blood red but with a metallic flake in it I do like this ride command screen here which seems to be very very clear and easy on the eyes you can change the display and uh, that seems quite nice. The standard mode at the moment. And this so that you fiddle about with changing your gauges and your music, your phone, navigation. Nice. Go back to gauges. Now gear selection is nice and smooth. I like that. Listen listen for this. There is a slight clonk there but it's nowhere near as bad as say a Harley Davidson not that much room to get your foot underneath that shifter it's probably adjustable but it does work switch gear feels pretty nice fairly solid and smooth in actuation feels quite quality now as you pull away the clutch is very uh, very light the shift feels smooth and the engine is uh, nice at these low revs it's got lovely torque produces 120 pound per feet of torque this at quite low revs so it is pretty effortless to roll on at these low speeds and of course this is uh, one of its uh, reasons for existing I could easily whip around this traffic but I want to see what it's like at these kind of trundling along second third gear 2000 you know 25 35 mile per hour revs and just see what it's like.
one thing I can say is that I have quite a scrawny backside. I have a, I have a big belly <laughs> and a scrawny backside and my backside fills this seat quite amply. I think if you are if you're packing a bit in the tush that might be a problem on the longer trips. I can kind of understand why they've not made it too wide because those of the shorter leg are attracted to the cruiser market because it's a lower seat and that would definitely help with the over seat uh, measurement if you are short in the leg and it will also help ladies who are confident with a big heavy bike as so long as it's well balanced with a low seat and uh, this certainly has that but for me personally I would probably want a seat that's maybe an inch wider on either side for touring purposes I do like these bars they're kind of like beach style but sometimes with the Harleys they're like too wide they're out here somewhere and at speed they're really awful this feels nice at low revs we'll see what it's like when the speed picks up we can get off uh, these busy roads in a second mirrors are nice they're really really solid really stable really like that I like the turn signal it's just a real positive feel to it really nice solid movement to it wow we're in uh, post coronavirus uh, traffic by the look of it plenty of traffic around let's change the mode let's put it in sport very simple switch gear you've got your uh, cruise control on the right hand side there and your start stop on your left hand side you've got your low beam your high beam your horn and some controls for the music to go up and down through screens and music control grips are pretty fat if you like uh, if you're used to riding Harley Davidson's and you like a fat grip you'll probably appreciate that uh, sports bikes tend to have a thinner style grip but cruiser riders do like something big to grab hold of now in sport mode it definitely feels uh, livelier you can see that there like kind of about two and a half thousand revs if you just open the throttle just the three thousand just watch it watch it You know, it's respectable pull it's not a it's not a, you know a 200 horsepower track day monster obviously that's not what it's designed for it's made for effortless smooth cruising I do like the engine I was a little bit surprised because I, I like the Scout engine which is a very modern engine uh, in some ways and I like the Challenger engine which is definitely a modern engine it's liquid cooling and a lot more powerful than this and I really uh, like that and rate that not sure why they're waiting let's go um, and the Challenger engine is yeah as baggers go that's uh, modern baggers go it's a real good uh, alternative to a Harley Road Glide or a Street Glide for instance this is playing much more the kind of like uh, the Road King type convertible Kind of like the, I guess the nearest equivalent bike, peer-wise, would be the Softail Heritage from uh, the Harley range, which has the the bags and the screen again, all quick detachable, and that comes with the 114 engine, which is a nice engine, producing decent power. And uh, Harley are very good at sorting out the little things on their bikes like switch gear and that kind of thing uh, to make a nice overall package Indian always feel that a little bit more kind of modern if you like a little bit more cutting edge uh, even though we're talking the cruiser market rather than uh, state-of-the-art race reps or something I can say that the front end feels nice probably nicer than the the Harley Heritage Softail which I've ridden uh, seems to be more composed 
uh, the preload compression rebound, not that it's adjustable, uh, just as it comes from the factory, feels about right to me. It's soft and supple and compliant, but you can feel what the front end is doing and it tracks the line pretty well. The rear is uh, definitely restricted on travel, and that's part and parcel of the cruiser package, you know that's what you're going to get with a cruiser, right? It's not a, a big, tall adventure bike with a foot long of travel suspension. So, yeah, you feel it, uh, you know, when I'm talking, you hit the bumps and stuff, it kind of jolts your voice because you kind of feel that back. It's not terrible, it's nowhere near like a hard tail or something. And I've ridden worse cruisers, but it definitely feels uh, both firm and lacking in some ways. So it feels quite, uh, I think on a long ride, uh, certainly my butt would suffer uh, a fair bit. Although changing the seat for a more comfortable, wider, better padded seat would probably be about the best uh, money you'd spend on this bike, you know, for me personally. Self-cancelling indicator as well, look at it, that's quite nice. Uh, I do notice uh, certain revs, sort of 3000 revs, so for instance, it can be just mildly blurring on your vision. There's no uh, heel toe shifter on this, which would probably be nice. I don't know whether that's an optional extra. And the floorboards feel pretty nice. I mean, if I put my feet in the middle of the floorboards, it feels more like uh, mid controls and then the, when you go to use the, the brake and shifter it's more like a semi forward control it's definitely not forward but it's, it's kind of a halfway house not bad quite like that uh, typical of the cruiser your kind of brake lever and uh, shifter are a little bit up in the air uh, a little bit taller than on a traditional bike and uh, I think part of that is again down to the nature of the beast it means that you know the floorboards have to be angled up a bit and they do that to increase the ground clearance because ground clearance is obviously compromised with the short rear shot so you're always going to be slightly pointed up but it's not too bad with the harley sometimes you can feel like you're bending your foot too far up or you have to literally lift your foot off the floorboards all the time you want to change gear and if you're used to that you'll feel the most natural thing in the world but if you're used to riding a universal Japanese motorcycle or a European motorcycle you'll think wow that is all just wrong 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 so it's just an, uh, an adjustment really more than anything uh, I mentioned the mirrors but I'll mention them again I think they single out good praise they're not ugly as standard they are rock solid and they give a great view of uh, what's happening behind you I would definitely like that shifter peg to be a little bit higher higher place for myself personally and uh, yeah the riding position it's pretty good I do like these bars it's put my arms in a very nice flat uh, position which is really useful for leverage and also it means uh, the stretch between my shoulder blades is very relaxed so the top half of my body is feeling great in terms of uh, ergonomics um, I have mentioned the screen probably isn't quite right for me I would probably uh, I'd probably fit the accessory screen which is shorter and smoked and I think when that's fitted to the bike, particularly with the rear pillion sissy bar, and you'll see in the marketing shots, they, they do that with the maroon bike. It really does look uh, pretty nice as an overall effect, I think. So I would say uh, that's probably the first thing I would swap out, probably the screen fit sissy bar. And uh, this bike... Uh, would sound a lot better with the stage one kit fitted if you just wanted some noise but also uh, is this guy ever going to move but also uh, a stage two kit would be particularly nice where you've got hot cams and stuff it would be particularly good moved ok 
Okay, pretty smooth at higher revs. And uh, flick flacking through the lanes. Lane to lane is pretty easy. Um, belies its weight quite well actually. I think it definitely carries its weight way better than uh, most of the Harleys. It really steers very sweetly and ground clearance there was respectable. I wonder whether I can get it on twistier roads. Yeah, it's punchy and uh, it's confidence inspiring where you've got to chop and change lanes to make some decent progress so I like that let's talk about the uh, the brakes the brakes feel you know on paper they look a bit you know underwhelming power wise but I can say that they're smooth and progressive and they're in keeping with the nature of this bike you know you start throwing it around like a race replica it might seem uh, slightly wanting in an emergency but back in the real world riding this bike for how it's intended and occasionally riding it a little bit spiritedly I think in emergency the brakes would be just fine they have bags of feel and they have decent power and they're quite progressive and smooth so and the rear works uh, very well, typical of a cruiser again, because uh, a lot of the weight is carried more 50-50 on a cruiser, so you're getting that extra leverage off the rear brake, as opposed to say a race replica, where it's more kind of 80-20 in terms of uh, braking power. I'm hitting some uh, fairly heavy suburban traffic, and that's, good actually because uh, a lot of people that buy this kind of bike will have that kind of living arrangement where they've got to fight a bit of traffic before getting out into the countryside and enjoying uh, you know enjoying the uh, trappings of the mountains as it were got a fairly pleasant sound uh, sorry there's a grass cutter over there but and it uh, certainly revs out willingly uh, a little bit faster than the, the Harley engines I'd say and uh, sounds pretty pleasant I think with a you know a change of air filter and more open pipes I think it would probably sound pretty sweet this so yeah quite nice yeah I quite like the engine I was a bit surprised because uh, I'd heard some kind of a, a couple of negative things and of course it isn't as powerful as the uh, the liquid cool challenger but it's got the torque and it's got the smoothness and I think uh, uh, for me I have ridden the 111 but the 116 is definitely got a few more beans there's no doubt about that and uh, I think that would be the engine for me uh, if I was to buy one of the the air cooled Indians but yeah she can hustle pretty nice yeah brakes are good brakes are probably a little bit better than I uh, the impression I may have given actually uh, it feels nice definitely a nice bike this I would have to change a couple of things if uh, it was joining my stable I'd change the screen and the seat I think but Everything else I think you could live with pretty pretty well. It's a good looking bike I think, that's for sure. And uh, if you like those classic looks, 
I mean the engine is a beautiful looking engine I think Thunderstroke it's just a very timeless cool and uh, you know, if your bag is this cruising along 56 miles an hour you know 2000 revs six gear effortless smooth pretty comfortable then uh, yeah that would be awesome I'd probably live with the standard shock for a year or two and then I'd replace it with an aftermarket shock uh, to give a little bit more comfort and uh, the screen you could probably live with cut down change uh, I think the seat would definitely have to go for me it's gonna be you know great on a shortish ride like I'm doing today in you know, a half an hour or so but you know when you want to do a 300 mile day or something you're gonna feel you're gonna feel that uh, lack of padding I think it feels a bit too soft at, uh, at standstill you know you know when you sit on a bike in the shower and you think oh this seat's lovely it's soft there's plenty of padding it's really nice that's usually not good uh, it needs to feel firm because uh, particularly if you're of any weight you know if you're over 200 pounds or something you're gonna need a firm seat because by the time you've ridden 100 miles plus that padding is really compressed and it needs to support your body weight so if you're, uh, you're 150 pounds you may be okay with the stock seat if you're skinny particularly uh, a typical lady for argument's sake but if you're a uh, 200 pound plus burly guy yeah you probably need to change this seat again it's something you could you know you could live with for some time if you had to or wanted to it's not really you know it's up to you really uh, but for me personally probably the very first thing I'd swap out uh, and if there was an option I'd probably do it before even picking up the bike I do like uh, the black headlight nasal and the blacked out forks uh, and this uh, big chrome engine is it's a it's a very good looking bike and uh, enjoy uh, enjoyable ride I like it you know a bit buffed in off the screen it's just the wrong height for me I think uh, without it would be lovely so a lower screen probably for me get a bit of airflow but of course for winter you're going to need a taller option if you're going to ride through winter but with all this chrome you know you probably wouldn't want to this is more of a you know pleasant dry weather bike Although uh, the fit and finish seems pretty good, I'm sure uh, it will stand up to a few days of getting dirty in the rain and then uh, pressure wash it off. Watch out for this big truck so I don't get squished. But yeah, nice one Indian. Good job. 2022 Indian Super Chief Limited. The original Indian Chief was designed by a man called Charles Franklin, a dirt track racer as well as an engineer, and was also the same designer who came up with the original Scout. Of course it was very different from today's machine, but it still had a V-twin with dual cams, a low seat and smooth lines. For its era, it was a reliable machine making decent power and was a relatively agile ride. In 1940, the Chief was often used in racing and was a good platform for customization. Chronologically speaking, the Chief is now 100 years old and Indian have designed a modern interpretation of the design by America's first motorcycle company. It's a blend of acknowledgements of days gone by, coupled with modern convenience and the expectation levels of ever demanding customers. So as well as extolling a classic looking engine, a steel tube frame and wire wheels. It also has a touchscreen, rider modes and safety equipment. These all blend seamlessly into the mix, satisfying old meets new. 
The Indian Super Chief Limited starts at $20,999. Comes in black metallic, blue slate metallic, or maroon metallic. Engine wise, it has the Thunderstroke 116 or 116 cubic inches, which is uh, 1,890 cc. Peak torque is 120 pounds per feet, or 162 newton meters. And that peak torque is reached at 2,900 RPM through a six speed gearbox. Fuel capacity is four gallons or 15.1 liters, and it has a maximum lean angle of 28.5 degrees. The seat height is just 26.2 inches or 665 millimetre. Weight wise with an empty tank you're looking at 714 pounds or 324 kilo and with a fuel tank it is a portly 739 pounds or 335 kilo. Front brake is a single 300 millimetre semi floating rotor with a four piston caliper and the rear is a single 300 millimetre floating rotor with a two piston caliper. Wheels are 16 inch wire spoked front and rear except in tube tyres. Tyres are Pirelli Night Dragon, the front is a 130 by 90 and the rear is a 180 by 65 profile. Front suspension is a 46mm telescopic fork and the rear suspension is dual shocks with adjustable preload. Infotainment wise it has a 4 inch round ride command touchscreen display which includes clock, air temperature, audio, navigation, traffic and weather plus bluetooth for phone and headset. Lighting wise it has a LED headlight, LED tail brake and turn signals as well. Factory warranty is two years, unlimited miles. As standard equipment, it comes with ABS, rider modes, keyless ignition, USB charge port, a 12 volt charge port, rear cylinder deactivation, saddlebags, wire wheels, windshields and floorboards. Additional key touches include premium chrome finishes, fork covers, large headlight nasal and a beautiful Indian script badging on the tank. Comfort wise, it has floorboards, cruiser handlebars and a stylish two up seat. For convenience, saddlebags and quick release windshield are standard, quickly allowing a switch from Boulevard Cruiser to two up Tourer. Additionally, the rider can switch between three rider modes, Tour, Standard and Sport. It also comes with keyless ignition and cruise control. Currently Indian offer a low windshield, fishtail exhaust tips and front highway bars. Also heated grips, lower closeouts and nasal accessory switch. Passenger backrest, light mount and driver lights. Quick release sissy bar, stage one exhaust tips and highway pegs.
right on people that hit subscribe. Write often, write carefully, write on.